welcome to iiocs.com food tech club today's topic is preservation by canning canning is a method of preserving food by storing it in a hermetically sealed container and then sterilize sterilizing by heat so what do we basically do in canning so we hermetically seal the can so hermetical sealing means sealing in a air tight container okay so after sealing in a air tight container container the canned food is sterilized by heat mostly the canning is done in tin cans but other containers are also used like glass plastics etc canning is done to fruits and vegetables that should be as fresh as possible so that their final quality could be retained the actual quality could be retained usually canning industries are set very close to the fruits and vegetable production area so that they are canned as soon as the fruits and vegetables are harvested to speak a bit about the history in the 18th century a french confectioner named nicolas apert invented a process of sealing the foods hermetically in containers and sterilizing them by heat okay so it was found by nicolas apert canning is also known as apertizing as an honor for the inventor nicolas apert So Nicholas Apert Apert is called as the father of canning. Okay so this apertization is now called as canning before it was being called as upper apertizing as the inventor inventor's name is Nicholas Apert. So Nicholas Apert had also published a book entitled The Art of Preserving Animal and Vegetable Substance for many years which is the first known work on modern canning so let us see the principles behind canning so the main purpose is to uh, the first one is destruction of spoilage organisms within the sealed containers by the application of heat so first aim is destruction of the spoilage organisms The next principle is to improve the texture, flavor and appearance of the food by cooking. So and the last principle is to stop the recontamination of food during storage. Okay these are the principles of the principles behind canning. Let us see the process. So first after harvesting the fruits are fruits and vegetables are selected. so these selected fruits and vegetables are sorted according to the size shape color and they are graded and these selected sorted and graded vegetables and fruits are washed peeled then cut then blanched so these blanched uh, food is filled into cans so after filling into cans if it is fruits so we will preserve it uh, with syrup uh, sugar syrup and if it is vegetables we'll uh, preserve it the with the brine brine solution brine solution is nothing but the salt solution so after the contents are filled the lid is put and it is clinched okay after clinching exhausting is done where the air is removed and then seaming is done in order to seal the containers so after sealing so after complete packing the food the uh, can cans are processed that is they are heat sterilized so then they are cooled and they are subjected to different tests for defects and then stored okay 
so this is the pictorial representation of the uh, process the food uh, the fruits grown are harvested then transported to the nearby canning factory they are graded so you can see the rejected uh, ones and the good ones are accepted and they are sent for processing so they are washed then peeled cut then blanched filled then sealing is done and then cooked cooled and then it is stored in uh, proper storage condition then labeled and dispatched let us see the steps one by one first step is selection of fruits and vegetables quality of canned product is dependent on the quality of the raw material as i told you the raw material should be as fresh as possible fruits should be firm mature and uniformly ripe over ripe or in uh, infect uh, insect infected or diseased fruits uh, should be rejected okay yeah this this is done in sorting especially in selecting and then in sorting unripe and Im immature, <coughs> immature fruits should be rejected because they generally shrivel and toughened on canning vegetables should be tender fruits and vegetables should be free from any of the dirt okay any of the unremovable dirt so small amount of the uh, dirt um, attached to the food can be removed during in the washing step but uh, any amount of uh, sticky dirt which cannot be removed should be uh, sh such fruit should be rejected next step is sorting and grading any spoiled blemished blemished is uh, having uh, unacceptable color or uh, the, the appearance or any dots on the f fruit peels okay so such fruit should be rejected even the injured fruit fruits they are discarded raw material should be sorted based on the maturity and ripeness shape and color sorting can be done by using image processing or color sorting so in image processing the particular shape of uh, the fruits is measured and also the ones which are not in proper shape or which are which are very different from the other fruits so they are rejected so in color sorting so uniform color uh, of fruits are selected in order to maintain the uh, appearance quality of the food of the fruits fruits and vegetables should be graded according to size shape weight and color to obtain uniform quality of canned products so next is about grading grading can be done by hand or by machines various types of graders are used like screen graders roller grader diverging belt grader then weight grader etc fruits like berries cherries grape and plum are graded whole while peach pear apricot mango pineapple etc are generally graded after cutting into pieces looking into the quality of the fruit inside okay so this picture shows the roller grader okay so in the roller grader what happens is you can see the rollers here so these rollers are arranged in di uh, different distances so in the first part so the distance is very less so in this part the smaller sized um, vegetables are fruits are they are they are graded and they'll get separated okay so after the remaining will move to the next section where the distance between the rollers will be little bit more so the next level of fruits will be next size of fruits will be separated here and and the same procedure goes on and the larger ones will be separated at the end 
okay so same uh, method is used in diverging belt so in diverging belt what happens is so the belt from beginning till the end so it goes on diverging it it goes on increasing its distance between the two belts okay so the first the smaller ones will be separated here then here so according to the size it will be separate the larger one will be at the end okay so this is the screen grader so in screen grader also you have different sizes of holes in on the screen so initially it will be the smaller holes so these these screen will be vibrating okay vibrating uh, so that the vegetables or fruits will be moving further so while moving if the fruits fit into the particular hole they will fall down into that section okay here also the larger ones will be accumulated at the end so last one is weight grader so in weight grader based on the weight of the fruit uh, these are graded so the heavier ones will will fall down first and the lighter ones will move further and then they are separated at the end okay so this is the mango uh, weight grader and this is apple weight grader okay the next step is washing so washing is nothing but soaking or agitating the fruits and vegetables in water or washing with cold or hot water sprays water temperature must be kept low and water level must be controlled uh, and cleaning and chlorination practices should be maintained washing after peeling removes vitamins and minerals therefore we should not wash after peeling so washing should be done before peeling vegetables may prefer preferably soaked in a dilute solution of potassium permanganate to disinfect to disinfect them okay so some pictures of washing so this is washing by spraying the first picture is washing by spraying and this is washing by soaking in the water tanks and this is also washing by spraying the vegetables okay yeah the next one is peeling washed fruits and vegetables are prepared for canning the fruits and vegetables are peeled by hand with knife or machine after or it can also be peeled by heat treatment or lye solution so let us see about the lye peeling lye is a solution of caustic soda so for an example for lye peeling is peaches and potatoes are scaled in steam or boiling water and put in cold water to soften and loosen or cracking of skin later the skin can easily be removed by hand or by pressure uh, spray of water sorry this is an example for the heat treatment uh, peeling by heat treatment okay so in uh, peeling by uh, the lye peeling is done by dipping the fruits or vegetables in the lye solution that is caustic soda solution next is hand peeling fruits and vegetables are peeled and cut by hand with the help of special knives curved blade and special guard to regulate the depth of peeling next is by machine so mechanical peelers for apples and pears carrots turnips potatoes so for all these vegetables we can use the mechanical peelers peeling by heat some fruits and vegetables are scalded in steam or boiling water as i explained before to soften and loosen their skin fruits and vegetables are export, exposed to a high temperature of 40 degrees celsius for 10 to 60 uh, 
uh, seconds which facilitates easy removal of the peel the heat peeled fruits absorb sugar more readily than those peeled by other methods so let us see some pictures of uh, peeling so this is about mechanical peeling mechanical peeling of apples so this is peeling by heating okay so usually for tomatoes or potatoes it is used yeah next is cutting so for cutting we should cut the fruits and vegetables depending upon the requirement like so it can be sliced diced so it can be cut into a finger shape etc either by knife or by machine at the same time speed stone and core are also removed by special coring knives so the seeds or the stone and the core are removed by the special coring knife next is blanching in blanching operations the prepared fruits and vegetables are kept in boiling water or exposed to steam for 2 to 5 minutes followed by cooling in running cold water so in blanching what we do what do we do we first boil the fruits and uh, uh, vegetables in water or we expose them to steam for 2 to 5 minutes okay then immediately it is cooled in running cold water the time and temperature of blanching vary depend depending on the type of raw material inactivation of peroxidase enzyme is used as as an index for to check the adequacy of blanching so we have to check the inactivation of peroxidase enzyme in order to see whether the blanching temperature and time is adequate or not okay let us see the various purposes of blanching so blanching is done in order to inactivate the enzyme which cause discoloration and off flavor this is the basic purpose so for other purposes also we use that is to reduce the volume by shrinkage making their packing easier so next use is to reduce the microbial load on raw materials and then to enhance the green color of vegetables like peas and spinach to retain the color of the green color of the green vegetables then to remove undesirable acids and astringent taste of the peel resulting improved flavor in the fruits and vegetables so the last purpose is to remove occluded gases for reducing strain on the seam of can during processing okay so there are very different types of blanchers one of the most used blancher is steam blancher which you can see see here rotatory steam blancher yeah so after blanching we have to fill the blanched fruits or vegetables into the cans so usually tin cans are used as containers for canning the cans can be opened from any end as they are called open top sanitary can okay on both the ends you can open the cans uh, uh, before packaging cans are washed with hot water prepared food fruits and vegetables are filled into cans either by hand or by machine plain cans are used generally although in in case of colored fruits like black grapes red plum strawberries etc lacquered cans are employed so we'll see about lacquering or what is lacquering later in case of canned fruits the drained weight should not be less than 50% and for berry fruits not less than 
Similarly, for canned vegetables, the drained weight should, should not be less than 55%, but in case of tom tomatoes, it is limited to 50%. Therefore, fruits and vegetables are filled about 60% of the filling capacity of a can. So this is can filling, picture representing the can filling. So once the cans are filled with vegetables or fruits, it is then uh, filled with the syrup or the brine. Okay, A solution of sugar in water is called a syrup, a sugar syrup. Generally, the fruits are covered with sugar syrup. Cans are filled with hot sugar syrup at around 79 degrees Celsius to 82 degrees Celsius, leaving a head space of 0.3 to 0.5 centimeter. The head space is the gap above the uh, sugar syrup. Syrup of 10 degree or uh, 10 degree to 55 degree bricks. Bricks is the percentage of sugar in the Bricks is the unit for knowing the percentage of sugar in the sugar syrup. Okay, so the bricks for the canned food should be between 10 to 55 bricks is generally used. We can prepare sugar syrup of 20 bricks by dissolving 250 gram sugar in 1 liter water and for 50 bricks by dissolving 1 kg of sugar in 1 liter water. Sometimes citric acid and ascorbic acid are also mixed with the syrup to improve flavor and nutritional value respectively. So even uh, citric acid will uh, uh, and ask any acid will avoid the crystallizing of the sugar syrup. That's why they are added. The purpose of adding sugar syrup to fruit is to improve taste, to fill up the interspace in the can and to facilitate further processing, that is cooking. Okay, if you have a liquid medium, cooking will be easier. Next is brining. So brine is a solution of common salt in water. Brine is used in canning of vegetables. So Sugar syrup is used in canning of fruits and brine is used in canning of vegetables. A brine of 1 to 3 percent salt is used at 79 to 82 degrees Celsius, leaving a head, pay, head space of 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 centimeter in the can. So same as the sugar syrup, you should have a gap between the syrup and the ceiling the, uh, between the cap. So there should be at least 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 centimeter gap. The objectives of brining are to improve the taste of vegetables and to facilitate further processing by filling the interspaces of vegetables in the can. Once the contents, all the contents are filled, so we have to put the lid of the can and we have to clinch the lid. Okay. Now the filled cans are covered loosely with the lid before exhausting. So they are covered loosely. Remember it is not fully covered. It is covered loosely. So we will be sealing it after exhausting. It has some disadvantages uh, such as spilling of the contents and toppling of the lids. In modern canning, lidding has been replaced by clinching uh, clinching operation in this case lid is partially seamed the lid remains sufficiently loose to permit the escape of gases air and vapor formed during exha exhausting operation so uh, previously only the lidding operation was done now what they do is they clinch so they this is the complete sealed uh, picture but clinching will be loosely or double seaming the um, cans with the lid.
okay Lo loosely locking the cans with the lid okay that is clinching yeah after the can is clinched with the lid then the can is exhausted there are respiratory gases and air remaining in the cans which are to be removed before processing the method of removing these gases is known as exhausting containers are exhausted by heating or mechanically exhausted in heat exhausting the cans are passed through a tank of hot water or exhaust box box under steam the fruit cans are exhausted at 82 200 degree celsius for 7 to 10 minutes or until temperature at the center of the can reaches 74 degree celsius the vegetable cans are exhausted at 90 to 100 degree celsius for 7 to 10 minutes or until temperature of the uh, core of the can reaches 77 degree celsius the proper exhausting reduces the strain on the seam of the can okay the time and temperature of exhausting vary with the size and contents of can so previously also we observed that for vegetables the tem temperature required is little more when um, uh, when compared to fruits right because some fruits will be very soft if you keep the temp temperature very high, uh, high so it will become very soft and soggy okay in case of vegetables so most of the vegetables are hard in texture okay except some so most of them are hard in the texture advantages of um, exhausting yeah, advantages of exhausting are prevention of bulging of the cans when stored at high temperatures reduction of chemical reaction between container and contents then prevention of excessive pressure as well as the strain during sterilization once the can is exhausted then it is ready to completely getting sealed okay the cans are sealed by special closing machines known as double seamers okay seaming and sealing is almost the same these are the various designs and uh, these are of various designs and capacities these are hand operated as well as semi automatic or fully automatic seamers the can container should be closed immediately after filling to prevent excessive cooling of the surface of the product yeah here you can see the yeah seaming that is double seaming of the foot so the lid is rolled twice I mean rolled once and uh, with the body of the can okay so this will form a double layer okay it is locked here so if you take the can here okay, it will be a bigger can so th this will be locked so this is the container so this will be locked so this is called double seaming so here some uh, laminating cement is added in order to properly stick the seam okay after sealing we have to process the cans the processing of uh, heating and cooling of canned food to inactivate bacteria and to preserve food is is also called as commercial sterilization so commercial sterilization is net, nothing nothing but the process of heating and cooling of canned food to inactivate bacteria and also to preserve food 
Many bacterial spores are heat resistant which can only be killed either by very high or by very low temperature treatment or prolonged cooking. Such drastic treatment however affects the quality of food. If you use very high temperature so the quality of food will be affected. Thus time and temperature should be adequate to eliminate all kind of bacterial growth. We must, we must not overcook the canned foods otherwise it will spoil the flavor, appearance and texture of the product. All fruits and uh, acid vegetables can be processed satisfactorily at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius that is in the boiling water temperature. The acid present in fruits and acid vegetables retards the growth of bacterial and bacteria and spores. These bacteria and spores do not thrive in heavy sugar syrup which are normally used in canning fruit. Vegetables generally non-acidic except tomato are processed at high temperatures of around uh, 115 to 121 degree Celsius. Okay. Bacterial spores usually do not grow below 4.5 pH. Generally process the canned products having pH less than 4.5 in boiling water but products with uh, pH higher than 4.5 require processing at 115 to 125, uh, 121 degree Celsius. So if the pH of the uh, canned product is lower than 4.5 then the, the acidic condition itself will be uh, able to kill the bacteria or the spores inside the can. Okay, if it is above 4.5 degree Celsius, we need to increase the temperature in order to kill the microorganisms. The higher temperature can be obtained by processing in a retort under a pressure of 0.70 to 1.05 kg per centimeter square uh, retort conditions. The center of can should attain these high temperature. The temperature and time of processing vary with the size of the can. The larger the can, the greater is the processing time. Fruits and acid vegetables are generally processed in open type cookers, continuous non-agitating cookers and continuous agitating cookers. The open cookers are galvanized iron tank of desired capacity. Sealed cans are placed in iron crates and immersed in the tank containing boiling water. In continuous cookers, the cans travel in boiling water in crates carried by overhead conveyors. In continuous agitated cookers, the cans are rotated by spherical mechanical devices to agitate the contents of the cans. The agitation reduces the processing time considerably. The non-acid vegetables are processed under stream pressure in closed retorts. So, this was all, all, all about the co commonly uh, canned fruits and acid vegetables, right? So we can either process it in uh, cookers uh, or continuous non-agitating cookers or con continuously agitating cookers. So in agitating cookers, what do you do? You keep on agitating the cans in order to mix the contents of the cans. This is usually used for the larger size cans to ensure that the heat is 
reaching the inside of the the core of the cans also okay so in large scale processing it is uh, they use the retorts okay so that we will be seeing in the next picture so this is this is the retorting equipment so inside this you will be able to uh, retort or heat sterilize a number of cans together at a time the sealed cans are placed in the retort keeping the level of water to 2.5 to 5 cm above the top of the cans the cover of the cooker is then screwed down tightly and the cooker is heated by steam to the desired temperature the pe pe period of processing that is sterilization should be counted from the time the water starts boiling or steaming okay so after the water boils then we have to take the uh, consider the time of the cooking after heating for the re required period heating is stopped and the pet cock or the vent is opened so a number of trays can be put into this okay, the trays will be containing some amount of water that will be heated or the steam will be sent inside this yeah after it is processed you will be cooling it the cans are cooled rapidly to about 39 degrees celsius in order to stop the cooking process cooling can be done by several methods such as immersing the hot cans in tank containing cold water this is the most used method then spraying cold water turning in cold water into the pressure cooker and exposing the cans to cold air generally the first method that is immersing the hot cans in tank containing cold water is practiced cooling water may be kept sterile with 1 to 2% chlorine if canned products are not cool cooled immediately after processing the quality is deteriorated example peaches and pears become dark in color tomatoes turn brownish and become bitter in taste while peas become mashy very soft with a cooked taste that is why after heating immediate cooling to a proper temperature is important so in this picture you can see the cooling of cans inside a water tank cold water tank okay so usually in a large scale it will use a bigger tank this is a small scale cooling tank yeah next is testing for defects in the cans before the canned products are marked we should test them for any defect the finished cans are tested for leak or imperfect seals we should tap the top of the can with a short steel or rod in order to check so whether the seal is per perfect or the it is no, it is loose or it has any defect a clear ringing sound indicates a perfect seal while a dull and hollow sound shows a leaky or imperfect seal leaky cans should be removed from the lot and the rest should be retained yeah. so after the defected pro products a defect uh, products are removed so the products which has to be commercialized should be stored properly before sto storage the cans should be completely dry so we have kept in uh, wa cold water tanks right so after that you have to dry the cans from outside small traces of moisture are likely to in uh, induce the rusting in the tin cans they should be stored in a cool and dry place storage of cans at high temperature should be avoided as it shortens the shelf life of the product the high temperature may lead to hydrogen swell and perforation 
during extended storage. So we will see more about the hydrogen swell in the coming slides. The basement stores are useful especially during summer months. So in the basement you will have very low temperature when com compared to other uh, areas. That's why basement storage is more preferred. The temperature in these sto stores uh, are lower by about 6 to 8 degrees Celsius compared to outside temperature. Before dispatch, the cans are labeled and packed either in wooden or cardboard boxes and are ready for marketing. Yeah, let us know about the kind of tin containers used for canning. The cans are made of thin steel plate of low carbon content lightly coated on both the sides with the tin metal. So it should have low carbon content and they should be lightly coated on both the sides of the thin, uh, tin metal. Sometimes discoloration of the product or corrosion of the tin plate takes place. So this corrosion is due, is due to the oxidation or uh, reaction of high acid for foods with the tin cans. In order to avoid corrosion, these cans are coated inside and are uh, outside with lacquer. Okay, so lacquer is a wax like material. So, and this process is, is called lacquering. Okay, so remember lacquering is the coating done to the cans in order to avoid the corrosion. Okay, avoid the reaction of the uh, tin cans with the oxygen or with the acid contents in the food. There are two types of lacquering used. So one is acid resistant and the other is sulfur resistant. The acid resistant lacquer is a golden color enamel. Cans coated with uh, these acid resistant lacquers are called as for example raspberry, strawberry, red plum, colored grapes and pomegranates. So whatever fruits or foods having soluble colors, water soluble colors, so they are, those cans are lacquered with the acid resistant lacquers. Fruits having water insoluble color, for example, pineapple, mango, grapefruit, etc. are packed in plain cans only. They are not packed with the acid resistant lacquers. Sulfur resistant, uh, next is about sulfur resistant uh, lacquers. So the, these lacquers are also of golden color. So cans coated with this are called as the sulfur resistant cans or the C enamel cans. These cans are used for packing pea, corn, lima beans, etc. The tin cans are supplied to the canning factory in flattened form. So in sheet form it is supplied where they are reformed using a machine reformer into cylindrical shape. So from rectangular sheet so it is turned into a cylindrical sheet. Okay. Yeah. After that they are flanged by using flanger which curls the rings outward at each end. So the ends will be curved in order to facilitate the clinching and seaming. The one end of the cylindrical can is then fixed before filling. So the bottom will be first fixed. Okay. Using a machine known as double seamer. After filling, processing and exhausting the can, the lid is fixed using the same machine. Using the same machine, you close the other side also. Okay, this is all about the processing of cans, okay, canned foods. So, 
let us see about the spoilage in canned fruits and vegetables canned products are liable to spoilage for various reasons spoilage in canned food may be caused due to two reasons one is spoilage due to physical and chemical changes in the cans and the second one is spoilage due to the presence of or contamination of microorganisms so let us see about spoilage due to physical and chemical changes the first one is swell or bulge in the cans okay so swell or bulge in cans caused due to the positive internal pressure of gases formed by microbial or chemical actions so this is due to the internal pressure of gases inside the can so in that swell also we have uh, different types so the first one is hydrogen swell so this type of swelling is due due to the hydrogen gas produced by the action of food acids on the metals of the can okay so the food acids will react with the uh, metals of the can so this will produce gas which causes the hydrogen swell the swelling ranges from flipper springer soft swell or hard swell okay this is the with this is about various levels of swelling so flipper and springer swells are mild swells whereas soft swell, swell is very uh what milder than this flipper and springer swells and hard swell so in soft swell if you press the upper part of the swell so it will go inside okay in mild uh, swell that is in flipper and springer if you press so it will go inside and come back okay it can't stay in the normal stage it will be bulged back okay, in hard swell you can't press the uh, the lid of the can at all okay next type of spoilage uh, the physical spoilage or chemical spoilage is overfilling so overfilling should be avoided so this will this can cause leakage of uh, the cans or damage of cans okay this can also cause the swell also the next is faulty retort operation so it gives cans can uh, looks like swell so th uh, this faulty retort operation can retain uh, microorganisms or can uh, also retain the gases inside the food okay so that will give swells so next is under exhausting so it causes severe strain during heat processing because during heating you you will have a little bit uh, of um, a little amount of steam or any gases coming uh, out from the food inside the can okay so this if the can is not exhausted properly so this will cause a strain inside the cans next is paneling it is seen in large sized cans that the body is pushed inward due to high vacuum inside Okay, so over exhausting or high vacuum inside because of that so the seam or the lid of the not the seam the lid of the can will be sunken down okay it will be sinked okay next is rust rust is mostly seen under the label and subsequently affects the labeling part of the cans cans lacquered externally do not rust okay so if the cans are lacked, lacquered externally also then the oxidation will not happen which will avoid the rusting of the cans the next type of spoilage is leakage cans generally leak due to defective seaming and nail holes okay next is bursting cans may burst due to excess pressure of gases produced by decomposition of the food so the next type of spoilage is discoloration so this may be due to enzymatic and non enzymatic browning 
So enzymatic discoloration can be avoided by placing the peeled and cut pieces of fruit and vegetables in 2% salt solution. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for non-enzymatic browning, we can we have to ensure the blanching is done properly. Stack burning. The contents in the can if remain hot for a long time during storage result in stack burning. It may cause discoloration. So stack. So if you if the contents are stored for long time in the stacks, so we have discoloration. So that is called as stack burning. To avoid stack burning, cans should be cooled quickly to about 39 degrees Celsius before storage. So this stack burning usually ha happens if the temperature is not lowered after the processing, the sterilization of the cans. Yeah. So that's all about spoilage by physical and chemical factors. Now it is about spoilage by microorganisms. The time gap between filling and heat processing may cause microbial spoilage. If cans are not processed properly, they may result in spoilage by bacteria and the spoilage is termed as under-processed spoilage. So, various spoilages caused due to different microorganisms are flat sore so flat sore is nothing but the non acid vegetables spoiled by bacillus coagulans and bacillus sterothermophilus okay so this flat sore will cause the appearance of the um, lid of the can to be very flat okay so that that's how we can identify this flat sore so even if the acid production is there so the, these organisms the bacillus organisms will not produce gas that's why even if it is spoiled it will not have a swell the can will be flat only next is thermophilic acid spoilage so cans swell due to production of carbon dioxide and hydrogen by clostridium clostridium thermosacrolyticum so 60 canning of fruit sorry the canning yeah that's it about the thermophilic acid spoilage next is sulfide spoilage so these are caused by clostridium nigrificans in low acid foods so this sulfide spoilage is caused by the the clostridium nigrificans organisms which produce the sulfur contents in the cans so these are some spoiled microbi microbially spoiled can foods so you can see here the microorganisms identified in the can foods so here also you can see the spoilage of canned vegetables yeah that's all about the preservation of food by canning goodbye for today continue your studies with iiocs.com food tech club for any query please contact the number on the screen thank you